Hi there, I'm Flo Mounier from the band Cryptopsy, uh, and we are here to talk a little bit about drum-related things. The essence of drumming for me, uh, it's, it's been different from from year to year, from <clears throat> from when I was younger to now. Um, the essence of drumming for me right now is uh, it's just to create or to give myself a really, really nice, warm feeling inside because it's probably the only thing I can do properly. Um, and that I still have a lot of work to do on. I really love playing drums. I, I'm on tour right now and um, during that one hour a day where I'm actually playing is where I feel the most comfortable and where I have the most fun. It's fun for me to go behind a drum kit and to actually hear the drums more so than just playing them. When I play, I try to listen to the sounds and I try to create sounds that are um, pleasing to my ears. When I was younger, drumming was introduced to me and I wanted to play drums, but it wasn't like I fell in love with the instrument right away. I just wanted to play drums. I had uh, a few lessons here and there and those became more of homework than anything. So I wasn't the most studious um, drummer. I think I just enjoyed listening to music a lot um, and not necessarily recreating what I heard but just trying to take bits and pieces from the musical pieces of the drummings uh, and the different drummers that I heard and use them to create, I guess, my own kind of, uh, kind of thing. I joined the uh, Cryptos when I was 16 and I would say that around the age of 20 is when I really started to think about drumming um, in more of a studios, uh, studious way and get my foundations up to par to be able to facilitate things that were a little bit more challenging for me back then. So my drumming's been... Uh, an ongoing love affair that's just getting more and more passionate. <laughs> so the learning process uh, for me growing up um, was a little bit different than it is for, for youngsters nowadays because we uh, didn't have the YouTube and uh, um, actually, I, you know, I was lucky enough to have VHS cassettes that I would buy from, from drummers that I would uh, find very interesting. I, I learned a lot from watching different drummers. Um, and I find that diversity in what you listen to or what you look at um, or what you play or make you a little bit more knowledgeable as a whole. So I took bits and pieces, let's say, from Mickey D when I was listening to King Diamond and Dave Lombardo and Slayer and John Bonham and I would just, you know, instead of imitate one particular song and, and try to master what they were playing, I would just, you know, just try to grab these things that I really liked about them and, and, and do my own thing. And, and I guess what helped me a lot is when I was young and learning to play drums, I was already in a band. So I had no choice but to create and we had created original material from a get-go. I think I was in one cover band my whole life um, so it was always creating and always coming up with new things so we had to be um, as creatively interesting as possible so that's how I started learning things and then I tested things for you know when I was doing um, fast stuff which is what Cryptopsy you know was known for um, I had to find ways to make it so it wasn't all nerves because at first when I was really young it was all nerves the guitarists pushed me to go as fast as I could and they kind of pissed me off a lot actually always nagging me to go faster so at one point I just spazzed out and they're like yes this that's what we want you to do so I had to take that spasm and try to control it because then it'd be very hard to do for for shows and consistently
And like I said, we didn't have the YouTube and stuff like that. So I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. And it's, it's been, you know, a nonstop learning curve, if you wish. Um, at first, I tried, you know, different ways to walk, different ways to sleep, different ways to uh, open doors with the left hand instead of the right hand all the time, uh, different foods. I mean, it was just... Let's try to see what's going to make myself better. Not knowing necessarily what could have been very simple, like medical books and uh, personal training guides and what have you, that kind of explain um, what muscles are used for and how they work and what they need to, to basically uh, fuel up. Uh, wrists are the most important things as far as I'm concerned for my playing uh, when I play. So in order to have really, really fast wrists, I must develop the forearms because the forearm muscles control the wrist. So I try to push, and I'll just give you an example of a quick warm-up I do um, before playing. Always grip the sticks for this warm-up, and I always grip the sticks, so I'm not telling you to do so, but so that my fingers aren't used at all, and I would just warm up my forearms by using only wrists and doing an exaggerated, slower tempo kind of thing. Now after doing this for a minute or two, I'm gonna really, really feel it in my forearms, and that means that my forearms are warmed up. I can stretch a little bit, the forearms are getting warm, and then when I do stuff that's rudiment-based, I can do it just with my wrist or with my wrist and fingers. So I found that pushing my muscles to the limit of speed is really what makes it everything um, a lot easier because I'm not using nerves, I'm not burning out, I'm controlled. Um, same thing for the feet. Now, when I go fast, I use an ankle motion. So what I have to do to um, warm up my ankles is basically warm up the muscles that control my ankle, which is my tibia muscle and my calf. So to warm up my shin or tibialis muscle, I can do heels down. And when I do heels down, I try to also exaggerate the power that I, that I have coming down just to burn the muscle a little bit faster. So I do that for a little bit. And then I just use my legs and kind of stomp like flat on the floor and kind of use my the ball of my foot to roll off the ground to help my hip flexors in doing as little work as possible. So it really becomes a bottom of the, of the leg work as well for the calf. I mean, the, the way I try to, 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 to stay injury free um, is once again by utilizing the right muscles so that the right muscles are developed and I'm not doing a technique that's going to be using nerves or tendons in my wrist, legs, arms or anything. So I think that the most important thing in that is staying relaxed. When you have uh, that mind-muscle connection and you know what's going on and you know what muscles are working when you're doing a certain movement, well that knowledge um, helps you to stay uh, relaxed. The more relaxed you are, the faster you're going to be, the more dynamic you're going to be, um, and the more your playing is going to sound better to you and to, obviously, others, others watching you. So being relaxed, especially in such crazy music, is quite important for injuries. Um, you know, there's some stretchings you can do and stuff like that, but everybody's got a different body, so it's really hard to say, okay, well, you must do it this way, or no, I think that... That's, a, that's an error because a lot of people that say or that preach that you have to do it a certain way don't realize that if somebody else does it a certain way that's not made the same way physically, they could injure themselves. So always put yourself but to a comfortable level. Safety first. Don't overdo things. If you're playing drums, trying to like get faster with your feet and you're doing it five hours a day every day, then you're not letting time for your muscle to recuperate. And the muscle grows and learns at rest. And when that muscle doesn't rest, it becomes counterproductive. So you're trying to get faster and more endurance, and you're doing the opposite thing. So it's really important to rest as well, not to overdo 
your practice routines for, for strength and endurance and speed? If we talk about blast beats and grind beats, um, there's an endless possibility of different things you can do with your feet, your hands. Uh, we're talking a little bit about um, trying to groove with a, a grind beat or a blast beat. Blast beat's a little harder for me to groove on. It's like just really straightforward, really like as fast as possible with my hands. Um, I do give myself a swing though, and people think, "Oh, you're, you're like, no, I'm not grooving. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep count um, <laughs> because it gets really chaotic." But I mean, there's tons of stuff you can do with your feet while you while you're doing stuff like that. Different patterns, and the way I approach it is, I'm not gonna really come up with all these different blast beats or grind beats um, just for the sake of it. I'm gonna try to follow what the music is doing. So if the music has a musical pattern which can you know, evolve or, can, or I can turn into a rhythmical pattern, then I will try to do that. I know this, um, this one part in, um, in a song that we have called White Worms, the riff is, is and normally we, do, we just do like a, a grind, which is but I don't, I go like and I keep this one you know, going on the on the symbol and and cut my my snare hand to follow exactly what the the pattern is on guitar. So the way I find myself doing different grind beats and blast beats is actually trying to do something that um, the music calls for. What's um, really important and a point I want to touch on and that, uh, that I feel is crucial to especially this kind of music which become, can, can become really one level, you know, just noise and nonstop, blah, 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 and then just is, is um, dynamics. Uh, I find dynamics in, in playing in general really important. The way I try to develop dynamics, again, is by utilizing especially my hands, my wrists. If I have, because my wrists are the most powerful part of my, of my stroke. Fingers is just like, you know, icing on the cake when I really want to go fast. But having strong wrists, strong forearms, gives you the ability to accent and to um, use different notes and touches on and around the kit to create the different sounds, which will create a, a, a bigger dynamic range. So in a music that's so fast and intense, I try to create as much dynamic as possible to make it, you know, as interesting as possible. And I utilize a lot of ghost noting, a lot of double stroke um, in my playing, and um, you know, um, diversity is really important. So try to learn as many styles as you as you can. Try to, you know, learn learn jazz, you know, learn rock, learn metal, learn some Latin. Um, I'm, I really dig gospel too, because gospel is a really kind of a melting pot for a lot of these uh, different styles and um, and develop your touch you know and, and you'll see that going around the kit when you're not blasting non-stop every day day in day out is a lot funner when you can create really cool sounds and, and really cool swings and, and have um, have a nice nice touch around the kit If I think that emotion can be captured on a drum, it's, I guess, easier to hear on a guitar or on a, on a keyboard or on a violin or something like that. I definitely think that you can um, get an emotional vibe on a drum set. Now, as far as creating beats and, and, and patterns that have emotion, definitely. Um, in Cryptopsy, um, if we break it down to 4-4 uh, four, four timing, most of the snares are played on the three instead of the two and the four, which gives it a kind of a, kind of a, a lagging effect and, and a darker effect for me. Um, when I find that I what, would do maybe a double bass on one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, for me it's too uppity, it's too happy. Um, and for the kind of music I want to do, I don't want it, anything to be happy. <laughs> um, so I'll do one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. 
and I just find it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit doomier. Um, so yeah, there's tons of emotions that can be uh, brought out playing drums, and I, mean, I think I think rhythm is inherent in us because of our heartbeats. We hear you know our mother's heartbeats when we're in the womb and what have you, and that beat is always there. We associate to to, to rhythm, and you know some rhythms make us happy, and some. Uh, marches, if you wish, make us sad. So I think, first and foremost, the drum is a great provider of emotions. Um, I hope this was a little bit informative. I mean, this is you know based on my experience and, and, and what I do and what I like to do for my personal self and my personal playing. Um, it's not for everybody, obviously. Um, so yeah, until next time, um, you guys are watching Drum Talk, by the way. Really informative really informative segments and um, thank you for the support and thanks drum talk for the support take care we'll see you soon